What's up, y'all? So I'm uh, just kind of checking in. Uh, there was a couple of comments, one in particular that I want to address about uh, building an arsenal here. It was, uh, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen here and read it for you so you guys can see what we're talking about. But it's about building an arsenal. Um, and I think he was, he's probably made this comment a few times on some videos. So I kind of want to address it. So here it is. It's uh, still looking for more information and clarity on the ball scoring system you spoke about a while back. Looking to build an arsenal and like to know what the ball score difference between balls should be without overlap. For example, uh, if I have a ball score at 187 and one at 191, would that difference be close to warranting having both balls in the arsenal? And should the gap between the two balls be larger? If the lar if it's larger, what should the gap between scores be? So this is all just based on preference, honestly. Um, when the, the entire system was just built simply to give you a general idea of where bowling balls lie uh, as far as core cover combination comes into play. Um, it's not an exact science. It's not even, um, it's not even, I mean, I, I like the system because it gives you a, a good idea of where to place things, but I wouldn't be using it as like a, as the Bible. Like it's not the Bible of, of building an arsenal by any means. But when I'm looking at these numbers and stuff, I'm looking at trying to figure out um, how many bowling balls, first of all, that I want to carry. Um, so it depends on, do you want to carry six bowling balls? Do you want to carry 12? You know, do you want to carry 10? You know, it, it is what it is looking what you're looking for. If we're building a six ball arsenal, generally what you're going to want is you're going to want a couple of solid bowling balls, a couple of pearls, um, and then, you know, maybe a urethane and a spare ball or something like that. If you're building a tournament arsenal, um, and when you're looking at solid bowling balls, generally, uh, I would be looking for uh, an asymmetric and a symmetric. Most times that asymmetric ball is going to have a lower number than your symmetrical ball. Not always the case though. So, but if I'm being honest about this, when I'm looking at the numbers, I usually look at it like in the matter of 10 points. So uh, as long as I have bowling balls in the 190s, in the 200s, and then above 200s, I think I have a pretty well-rounded arsenal. Now, just because you have two bowling balls in the 190s, that doesn't mean they're going to be, you know, the same. You know, a 191 won't necessarily be the same as a 194 because it's all going to be based on what you're bowling on, how it's laid out and stuff like that. So um, you can have two bowling balls in the same realm of the same number and they can still be dramatically different from one another. You know, you could have... Um, two bowling balls that are 10 points different and see that they actually react really close to each other. So again, this is just a, a stepping point of trying to figure out what we can do to look at bowling balls when we go into the pro shop or when we're looking to drill other bowling balls. So for me, it's a lot of trial and error. What I see at tournaments is pretty much going to build what I'm, what I'm looking for. I do, I know for a fact for me, you know, there's like six bowling balls that go with me no matter what the pattern is. You know, it's stuff like my Zen, my Dark Code, my Gem, my Nova, my Purple Hammer, uh, and now adding in the uh, the Blue Tank. So those six are going to go with me everywhere I go, no matter where or no matter what pattern I'm bowling on. Um, and then I kind of sprinkle in some needs based on what I am bowling on. If I'm bowling on a shorter pattern... Uh, I'm more than likely taking a, a couple of black raws with me. I'm probably taking an extra urethane. If I'm bowling on a long pattern, I'm probably taking something like my Mythic Jackal. Uh, I'm going to be taking um, a, an extra Nova. I'll be taking my GB4 Pearl. You know, things that are going to allow me to play further left and not have a problem. Um, and when I look at the numbers, you know, a lot of those look like they could overlap, but I see differences in them in specific ways. So it depends on the type of bowler you are. If you're a, if you're really keened in on what your ball reactions are and you're seeing what you want to see and you can tell the difference, um, you shouldn't have a problem being able to, you know, build an arsenal. If, I mean, there, there's always examples of cases where you look at it and people always get caught up and stuck in trying to create a progression in their bowling balls thinking okay this is my weakest this is my strongest and I'm going to start with this ball and then I'm going to move to the and you can't do that because 
one day you'll bowl on a pattern that the gem is your strongest ball and it's making the most motion and making your best motion and like the raw is the weakest ball and then the next day you bowl on a different pattern and it, it gives you the illusion that the gem is actually your weakest ball and the raw is out hooking the gem and it's just because of how they're using energy on the lanes the raw is storing a little bit more on that second pattern and it's curving more down lane and making a stronger motion. Whereas the gem's using up energy early and it's looking like it's going straighter and not getting through the pin. So it doesn't look as strong, you know? So it just really depends on the surface you're bowling on. If you're bowling on a high friction surface, a lot of the mid range to lower end bowling balls are gonna look stronger than what your strong balls are because of how much energy they either store or, or use up. Um, and vice versa, if you're bowling on a newer surface that is super clean with a bunch of volume your gem and your nova and stuff like that those are going to look like they are much stronger than a raw a raw is going to float through that oil and it's going to get to the back part of the lane and almost look like it's it's just a dark just straight through and you never see much motion out of it so you just got to be careful of what you're trying to figure out don't get stuck in the mindset of this ball is stronger than this ball and at no matter no matter what this ball should be hooking more than this ball you know, it's just kind of one of those things. I don't know how many times I've gotten stuck in a tournament where uh, everything I feel like I should be doing isn't working. And I have to actually base, I have to back up and say, okay, well, what I'm, what I always normally do isn't working. What I think should happen isn't working. I have to think outside the box and now I'm going to do the opposite of what I think. So on a time when I feel like I need to have something that's gonna roll a little bit earlier and control the pattern, but yet I'm splitting and leaving flat tens all day, okay, this ain't working. I gotta go to the opposite end and feel like I need the ball to just get down lane and boomerang then. And when I do that, it forces me to go left and all of a sudden I have the world, you know? So it's just some of those things, you, you don't know until you try. You don't know until you know. And that's just very difficult to know these things without experience. Um, that's why, there will never be a book um, or a video or anything that will say, here's how you play the lanes. Here's lane play 101. This is what you do no matter what. It's never going to happen because it changes daily. Because the oils change daily. The surfaces change daily. Topography changes daily. The weather changes daily. People you're crossing with changes daily. I mean, the variables are just almost endless. And it's very difficult to predict anything that's going to happen. Transitions are different from day to day. That's why patterns play different from day to day. Who you follow is from day to day is different. Uh, even if you follow the same people the second day, they're all probably using different equipment than they did before. And it's breaking down the patterns completely different. So all these things just have so much influence on your ball motion and the bowling balls you should have in your bag and the balls that you should be bringing, you know, from home, you know, so it's, it's very difficult to make the right decisions here. And that's why, um, in my classes, in my training, I try to teach um, the things to look for, you know, the moves you should make, the typical types of moves that can give you the best possible reads um, without trying to make complete guesses. Because, the, I mean, even though everything is pretty much a guess anyway, uh, and we know the person who guesses right faster generally wins, um, I want to put you in a, pl in a place, in a spot where you can make these guesses a little bit more educated, where you can make them more like hypothesis, where you actually have an idea of what you should be doing and then act on that rather than just saying, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to try this and never knowing what's going to happen. So as a bowler, you need to be putting things in your memory bank. You need to be thinking about, okay, this is what happened last time I was in this situation and this is how it didn't work, or this is how it did work. I'm going to try this, or I'm not going to try that. You know, you just got to really be thinking about these things. And there's so much that people just don't take into consideration when it comes to playing the lanes, when it comes to playing patterns and choosing bowling balls and all of these different things. This is a major reason why you see, um, especially out on tour, you'll see the same guys having success week after week after week, because the situations change so much. Um, the lanes, for some reason, the patterns play to a specific, uh, a specific want, like the lanes want something specific and certain people are able to create that week after week after week. Um, and then you'll see a, a, the next year, all of a sudden, a whole different group of people is having success because now the lanes are asking for something completely different and it has everything to do with a, the, the patterns change a little bit. Um, the surfaces change over that year. Uh, and the humidity, the, the weather, the temperature, all these different things play a big factor in everything. So you just, 
That's why bowling is so hard, but yet so fun and challenging because there's too many things or so many different things that go into this game. Um, but this is also one of the major reasons, in my opinion, why bowling will never make it into the Olympics because it's not, there's, there's too many variables outside of a bowler's skill that come into play. So, but anyway, so I wanted to just address that. Don't be thinking about the numbers as in you got to have so many in this number, so many in that number, so many in that number. It's just a basic guidance to say, okay, this ball should fit here. Take those bowling balls out, throw them in the same areas, see what they do different on different patterns. Don't just think it's just the house shot, you know, unless you're just bowling house shot. If you're only bowling house shot, fine, then that's, that's okay. You can do that. But otherwise, you need to be taking them in different situations and seeing what they do in those different situations to be able to make an honest, educated guess or decision on what you should have. So that's all I got. I'm out of here. Um, hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps a lot of people. And uh, let me know in the comments below and all that stuff. So uh, until next time, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Take care.